Next, Wi-Fi hotspots, the easy way to keep in touch when you're out and about, crucial for people in business, especially the ones with cracked BMW wheels. Tens of thousands of hotspots around the country. But something you might not know about those hotspots, they are not secure, which few users seem to realise. To prove it, we persuaded two people in the audience to meet us in a well-known coffee shop, Unbeknown to them, it took seconds to hijack their email accounts. As a result, I've received some emails. This one says, Dear Anne Robinson, I've been asked to take part in Watchdog, but I find you rather rude. I'd much rather be in the audience of Strictly Come Dancing with love, Daniel. Is there someone in the audience with the email Daniel T at something? .co.uk. <laughs> Did you email me this horrid email? Uh, no, Anne, I didn't. I promise I didn't. <laughs> then can you explain why I got an email from you? Uh, no, I, I'm afraid I can't explain that. <laughs> and there's all. another one I've got here from Darcy Ida. Dear Anne, I've always found Matt Allwright very, very, very attractive. This can't be true. Do you think he would take me for a ride on his bike? Lots of love, Darcy. Have we got a Darcy? Hey. <laughs> you didn't like that. Did you? It could happen. Look at Bernie Eccleston. No, don't be silly. <laughs> How do you think this happened from your email? I don't have a clue. I really don't. Alex and Paul from The Real Hustle will show you how it's done. They're everywhere. Cafes, pubs, at the airport, even on trains. Wi-Fi hotspots mean you're never far from a place where you can wirelessly connect to the internet. But are those hotspots secure? Or could someone else be watching, ready to hack into your emails and steal all your personal details? Daniel here is going to help us find out. He thinks he's come for a meeting about being in the watchdog audience. All he knows is that we're doing an item on computers, which is why he's brought his laptop. He doesn't know he's being filmed, so he's innocently logged on to the cafe's Wi-Fi to catch up with some friends. What's happening on Facebook? Anything? I oh, know, I've gone into email. Daniel has no idea we're about to take control of his internet account. His friend does, but he's not letting on. Yeah. In a hidden room nearby, we're waiting to strike. And outside the cafe, the man who's going to help us do it. As well as his laptop, he's got a bit of kit anyone can get hold of on the internet. And most importantly, he has the skills to hijack wireless traffic. Normally, he helps fight online fraud, so we are keeping his identity secret. But today, he's showing us how it's done. Our man is logged onto the same Wi-Fi network as Daniel. And thanks to that special kit, not only can he see everything Daniel is up to online, but he's able to instantly send that information through to us. We're not going to tell you exactly how it's done, but it means that within minutes we can get into Daniel's email account. Are we in? Yep. And we can see his inbox, we can see all the emails he's received. Lots of Facebook notifications. I invited you to the event. Origami Biro. There we go. <laughs> uh, of course, we wouldn't so actually open viral. any of Daniel's emails but a fraudster would, and this inbox is full of the sort of information they'd need to steal his identity. Daniel hasn't got a clue what we're doing, or that now we can even pretend to be him. Uh, okay, so why don't we send an email? Um, yeah, why don't we send an email? Should we send an email to Anne? So, dear Anne Robinson. Okay, so we all know what the email said, and it's just a bit of fun. With love, Daniel. And put in a couple of kisses at the bottom. Oh, I think more than a couple. Or more than a couple, go on. And send. But so that Daniel's none the wiser, we need to make sure we don't leave a trace. So we should delete that yes. and delete it from the trash. Okay, so okay. Okay. he's in trouble. We did the same thing to another unwitting volunteer, Darcy. When she sits down to check her email, we break into her account too. Okay, we're in. Okay. <laughs> We've quickly found enough info to cause some real damage. There's a ton of Facebook emails. She likes Facebook. Loads of people commenting on her status. Oh, hello. Bank of America. Okay, we better not open that. Yeah. So is any public Wi-Fi safe? 
we tested the UK's top three Wi-Fi providers, BT OpenZone, the cloud, and T-Mobile. And we were able to hijack them all. Together, these three companies provide Wi-Fi at places like Starbucks, McDonald's, pret a manger hotels, and on trains. Pretty much everywhere you use a hotspot, you're vulnerable to exactly this sort of attack. Or worse, we've roped in someone who knows how valuable your personal information can be. How you doing? How are you? Yeah, good to see you. Hi, good to see you. You right? I'm good. Crime Watch presenter and ex-copper, Rav Wilding. And we're about to show him what a hacker can really do. Okay, Rav, so you've set up an email account. Yep. We don't know the uh, username or the password, okay? Okay. Would you like to sign in for me? Yep. Yeah, we'll look away. Using a Wi-Fi hotspot, Rav logs in. And within seconds, our man has got us into his email as well. So you've logged in. Yep. Talked to the internet a little bit. We've gained access to your account. To prove that, why don't you have a look at your inbox? I'm not going to lie this, am I? Probably not. I don't think so. But there's an email from me. From, from you? From me, saying hello there. So that's, that's horrible, actually. That's what, my... does the, what does the email say? You have an intruder. Now, you'd think we'd only have control of Rav's email for as long as he's online, but we're about to do something much more scary and freeze him out of his own account. I want you to try and log out of your account. Just hit the sign out button. Oh no. And can you tell me what's going on? It's not signing out. What's really scary is that we are still on. So we are still on your email account. Oh. We can carry on <laughs> sending messages. We are still in the same session that you opened for us. So you, can you imagine the implications that has? I, I could have ordered something on the internet with, with this email address, which mm -hmm. could have my bank details, my yes. address anything, details. Yes, anything that you have had on email and your sent emails and your inbox can be read by us. When I was in the police, we had a lot of uh, identity fraud where people would steal uh, mail, bills, all sorts of things, enough to set up their own fraudulent accounts. And I guess this is a, a cyber way of doing that. It's exactly the same, only uh, this way you don't even have to go through the trouble of trying to actually physically steal someone's mm. mail, someone's letters. You could just be sat with a laptop in a corner of any cafe and you can be doing these attacks all day long. Like millions of us, Rav uses Wi-Fi hotspots all the time. To see if there's any way of keeping his details secure, he's gone to meet internet security expert Tom Ilube. The team have just showed me how vulnerable I am in a Wi-Fi hotspot. How worried should we be about this? You don't have to be a super hacker in order to try and get into this sort of information. And therefore, it's becoming more widespread and we as consumers need to be more careful about how we use them and what we use them for. One way to protect yourself when you log on to public Wi-Fi is to use something called a virtual private network. The three main hotspot providers all suggest you use them. But how many of us would have a clue where to start? The problem with VPNs is that they're very techy. And really what needs to happen is that sort of technology that makes things really secure for the consumer, the wireless providers need to think about how do they incorporate that sort of technology into their service and almost make it seamless. T-Mobile does provide the software for Wi-Fi users to download. They could make it more obvious. But shouldn't all the main hotspot providers give that level of protection? Or even have it built in? As the ones offering Wi-Fi, shouldn't they be doing all they can to keep your details safe? During our tests at the cafe, as well as Daniel and Darcy, around 20 other people logged onto the Wi-Fi. Some of them checked their emails, instantly putting their information at risk. Lucky for them, it wasn't the bad guys watching. But next time, you never know. And of course, not just coffee shops, anywhere where there's a Wi-Fi hotspot, hotels, airports, train stations, you name it. Rav, you were taken by surprise. What have you since learned about cyber crimes? Well, they're both serious and on the rise. There was nearly 20,000 reported cases of this sort of thing happening last year, compared to just 6,000 the year before. But cybercrime itself accounts for 50 million pound losses a year. So it really, really is Amazing. huge. 
Daniel, what do you think now you've seen all that? Well, that's really worrying that they could get into my account like that. I was actually logged onto a dating site as well. <laughs> <laughs> well they didn't send any messages to any girls that I don't know about. <laughs> Darcy. He replied for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll probably do better now. That's why we're dressed up. We're going to meet up tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Darcy, what about you? I thought it was funny at first, but actually it's quite serious, considering I do a lot of shopping online and I use different cards and I just didn't think that would happen. No. Anisha? Whether companies are providing email or Wi-Fi, they've told us they're aware of the risks, and at least now we're aware of them too. T-Mobile say they've now made clearer how to download the software that can make Wi-Fi more secure. The other main providers, BT, OpenZone and The Cloud, say they're looking at ways to improve customer protection, but all of them ultimately say the responsibility rests with the end user, so you, not them. Their response is in full on our website, bbc.co.uk slash watchdog, along with details of what you can do to keep your laptop secure. Alex and Paul, I mean, don't you feel they sh there should be an obligation to warn people in... There is, Annie, you're right. It yeah. should be made a lot clearer that you do stand a risk. But the moral of the story is that if you're in a public Wi-Fi or hotspot, do not go to any websites that require you to fill in a password or a login, a, a username. Because those are your personal details and you're making them available for people like us to um, steal. And presumably not log on to your emails, isn't that... Well, if you do log on to your emails, it's really important that you try and sign out properly so that you don't leave your session active for someone to continue using. But, but you've still got a danger while you're logged on. Yes, you do. Absolutely. And, you know, we can block it so you can't log off, but you should recognise that as an issue right away. If you haven't signed out of your account, then you should be aware that someone could still be active within your account. It's also important to contact your internet provider and find out what level of protection they can give you from your actual internet provider at home. Whoever gives you your email account, they may be able to help. Okay, thanks, guys.